The first to appear were the men, ordered to walk ahead of the women and children by the Serbians on the other side of the mountain. A temporary ceasefire had been declared as the refugees, some 1,500 of them, straggled down the road to safety. These people, Croats as well as Muslims, had been driven out of their homes in the region of Kotor Varos. Some of them had lived in hiding for months on end until they were rounded up by the Serbs and pushed across the front line. They came, they drove us out of our houses and they burnt everything. We suffered, we went everywhere. Do you know what it's like living in other people's houses and in forests? I lived like that for six months. They spoke of how groups of Serbian irregulars in the wooded mountains had ambushed them, beaten them up and stolen shoes, clothes and belongings. Look, I have three children. Thank God they're still alive. Look at this one. They put a bayonet against his neck. He now can't eat because of fear. What can I tell you? A man gave me these because they took my shoes. They stripped my husband naked. People gave him clothes so he could dress himself. What transport was available in the town below came to pick up the weakest. As more refugees came down from the mountain, it emerged that some of them had been forced to live in caves without food for days on end. It was just like living here, on these stones. This is how we had to sleep. This is how the children had to sleep. Well, they couldn't even lie down. They had to sit on the stones. For three days at a time, we didn't eat. We'd find a little water somewhere, and we'd bring it back just to give the children something to drink. This is the reality of the Bosnian conflict, uncounted thousands of tired, bruised and bewildered people who faced brutality and hardships along their enforced exodus, not knowing if they'll ever see their homes and families again, not knowing how they'll survive the coming harsh winter in the refugee camps. Camps like this one in the town of Travnik, which some 20,000 displaced people have passed through in recent months. Here, the refugees have to share an army barracks with Muslim and Croat soldiers. Today, some families were reunited. The new arrivals were processed and asked if they had relatives and friends elsewhere to stay with. Those who didn't would have to find what space they could in the overcrowded dormitories. Conditions are dangerously unhygienic. There's no hot water, and despite the coming winter, windows broken by shelling can't be replaced. Among those streaming in, one woman who had given birth as she fled across the mountains, her baby died before she reached the refugee camp. In the same group, another woman had gone into labor after not eating for two days, but her baby was delivered safe and well in the town's hospital. Medical facilities here are badly stretched, with corridors used as extra wards, and staff say that in the winter months, up to 30% of the town's population may die of cold and hunger. I think uh, that the life for the patients and the life uh, of the other people from the town is very difficult. It's very dangerous because there are many children in this town, and uh, there is many problems for the uh, for the petrol, for the wood, for the other things uh, who uh, will take to, because the coal is very dangerous in this town. The only access to Travnik is by mountain track, because tarmac roads have either been sabotaged or cut off by the front line. When snow and frost make these routes impassable, the vital supplies of food, fuel and medicine will simply cease. The population of the town now probably doubled to 30,000 by the number of refugees, depends almost exclusively on aid brought in by road. Food is already rationed, and the outside aid agencies say they'll be virtually helpless when the land link is severed. Well, we're very concerned. It's our, I would say it's our major concern because of the uh, deteriorating weather condition and also because of the state of the roads. There's only a couple of roads access into central Bosnia and uh, if those roads are not kept open, then the supply of food to central Bosnia will be cut. Nighttime shelling is a regular occurrence in Travnik, which is less than five miles from the front line. 
The mortars and shells have left few of the town's buildings unmarked. Residents have made what repairs are possible, but there'll be no protection against the coming bitter weather. Like most others in their block, the Balasic family have put polythene sheets in their windows following a battle which left shrapnel marks in their flat. They have four refugees living with them, members of their family from occupied Bosnia. Their fear is of energy shortages caused by the war. It'll be very bad, frightening, cold. They can be very cold winters here, 30 to 40 degrees below zero. We can manage while there's electricity, but when there's no electricity, then we'll have no heating. We could die. So far, the front line has stopped just a few miles short of Travnik, partly because the ethnic mixture here doesn't favor the Serbs, and partly because the local population of Muslims and Croats felt able to make a stand. But six months of war have left their indelible mark on the town. Among the most common sites in Travnik are the military roadblocks, and, mixing with the local population, the groups of soldiers in full battle dress. Life in a town in daily contact with war has changed everyone. Soldiers bring their rifles to pray in the local mosques, and the children of the town are beginning to see weapons as part of normal life. The children have accepted war, and they play at war. They don't collect pencils and stickers, they collect shrapnel and cartridges and other types of ammunition instead. And more and more, they've come to recognize various types of ammunition. And that's become their main pastime, their hobby. In a farmhouse on a hill above Travnik, overlooked by Serbian positions from north and south, one of the few families who have not yet fled. They spend a lot of time in their cellar shelter. When the front line came to him, Azim Mamaledia made himself a gun, determined to put up a fight. Later, he sold his cow to buy two rifles for himself and for his son. But when asked how he'll face the winter, the strain begins to show. How can we prepare when every day we're waiting for them to drive us away? They've got weapons, we've got nothing. What's that after all? A little gun, it's nothing. They've got tanks, they've got howitzers. They're just two kilometers away up there on our land. The victims of ethnic hatred driven from their own farms, villages and towns will continue to make their dangerous forced march across the mountains as the snows begin to fall and the frost begins to grip. The unoccupied Bosnia where they seek refuge is now short of everything, not least hope. Even away from the front, thousands of lives are in peril as the tragedy of this conflict enters a new phase. Gabirado, ITN, Travnik. Gabirado.